This is Access 2016, Module 5, Part 13. We're going to look at using an input mask. Specifically, working with the input mask wizard, we're going to set up an input mask for the phone number. There's a few things you need to understand when we're working with our input mask. When you see the code a little later, you're going to notice that there are zeros in some of the number spots and nines in others. So the zeros indicate that it is required that you put a numeric digit in that space. The nine indicates it is optional. You can either use a numeric digit or a space. The other thing to understand when you are viewing the mask is that if you have a backslash, the single next character is a display only character. If you see quotes within the mask, that is telling you that all of the characters, more than one, that are displayed within those quotes are display only characters. Let's get back into our Care Center database. And to work with our phone number input mask, we're going to open up our owner data, or excuse me, our owner table. We're going to go into Design View. And you have to select the field you want to work with. So we're going to click on Phone. And then we're going to come down into the field properties, the properties about the phone field, and click in the input mask row. You'll see three dotted, three dots on a button, excuse me. We're going to click that button. And it opens up a wizard. This is a phone number field. This try box allows you to type in a phone number and see the way it would look with this particular input mask. You do not have to use it, but it is there if you want to. So if I typed in a phone number, you click at the beginning of the box, type in a phone number, 307-406-4321. You could see with this particular format how it would lay that out. So let's go ahead and click Next. This screen is asking us a couple of things. First of all, which numbers are required and which are optional? As it sits right now, the last seven are required and our first three are optional. The second question it's asking us is in, in addition to the formatting around it, we want parentheses, a space, the dash, all those things are being defined in there. We're also asked what the placeholder character is. So when you click in a field and it's flashing an underscore, that is because this is your placeholder character. We're going to go ahead and say next. And now it wants us to know, are we supposed to be storing all of the extra symbols within the phone number? Or are we storing just the numbers? Most of the time, you would want to just store the numbers because if you had a lot of phone numbers in your table and you store the extra symbols, that means you are now storing one, two, a, two parentheses, a space, and a dash. That's four extra spaces or four extra pieces of character for every single phone number. So usually, we would store without and click Next, and then we're going to finish. 
So you can see the mask that it creates. The exclamation always starts it. We have a backslash, which tells us the single next character, which is an opening parentheses, is display only. The nine tells us that the first three numbers are optional. We could type spaces. Then we have inside quotes, a closing parentheses and a space. Those would both be display characters. The first three numbers are required. Then we have a backsplash telling us again that this is display only. And the last four digits are required. Here at the end, these are telling us whether we're storing the values or not, as well as the placeholder character. So in a few minutes, we're going to edit this mask, but let's see what it looks like first. So we're going to go ahead and click on View and Save. And you can see here the phone number and how it looks. Now perhaps we decided we don't want parentheses around it after all. We would rather have a dash in between both segments. So to modify it, you can make changes by typing it once you've created it. So let's say one thing I decided is I don't need this initial opening parentheses. I'm going to get rid of that. And then instead of a closing parentheses and a space, I want a dash. So I'm going to get rid of the quotes and everything in them. And I'm going to put a backslash, which is above your enter key, and a dash. Now when I hit the tab key, you'll notice I get this little option here, property update options. So I can tell it to update the input mask everywhere the phone is used. And it says, okay, it's used on another form. So you say yes. And now this new format would be visible on the form. Let's take a look at our new format. Say yes to save. And now you can see the new format. Another change you could possibly make if you went back to design view is if you wanted to make all of the digits required, you could change those three from nines to zeros, and they would all be required. So you want to be very careful when you're trying to do these input masks, especially on an assimilated exam, that you read the instructions very carefully as you're going through the wizard to determine are you supposed to change whether they're required or not. Are you supposed to change the placeholder character? Are you supposed to change whether or not you are storing those extra characters? If you're using a simulated exam, such as your SAM exam, you want to make sure that you answer the questions completely as you go through the wizard. It may not allow you to edit the format after it's completed. You may have to enter it while you're answering the wizard screens. That concludes working with our input mask, which allows us to make number fields look a little more readable.